Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have a problem where we have a wheel that's rolling down an incline. It is a 2% incline and the wheel rolls at a constant speed. Which means that the component which is parallel to the incline of the weight, which is called the mg sine theta component, must be equal to the friction force, otherwise the wheel would start to accelerate or decelerate if the two forces were not the same. Now a 2% incline is a very small incline. And so let's find out first what that is in degrees. We know that the percent incline is the rise over the run. So 2% is equal to the rise over the run, which is the definition of the tangent of theta. In other words, theta is equal to, and of course I shouldn't use the same angle because I used theta already. Um, well, no, I can use that. That's the angle I'm looking for. All right, so theta is equal to the arc tangent of 2%, which is 0 0.02. And let's see if I remember right, that's right. That's 1.146 degrees. So it's a very small angle, not a very steep incline. Now what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find the coefficient of rolling friction. We're trying to find the distance that the tire, the wheel is being compacted. So that's the distance from where the tire touches the surface from the point directly below the center and where it no longer touches the surface. We're looking for this distance. The coefficient of rolling friction is indeed a distance with units of meters rather than a coefficient that we normally are used to with no units at all. So we're trying to find V and the equation we're going to use is as follows. We know that the force of friction times the radius of the tire is equal to the reaction force times the coefficient of rolling friction. So that's the equation that we derived a few videos ago. Solving that for B, we can say that B is equal to force friction times the radius divided by the reaction force. Now we said already that the friction force must by definition equal mg sine theta because it's not accelerating or decelerating. So this is equal to mg sine theta. The radius is known, we call that r, and then divide that by the reaction force. Now the reaction force is going to be equal to the normal force times the cosine of the angle the angle that we make right here. So we don't know what that angle is. Let's call that angle phi. And, but it's a very tiny angle because B is expected to be a very small number. So we say that R is going to be equal to the load W times the cosine of the angle, the cosine of phi. Now W here has to be the same as mg. So we can replace that. So this is equal to mg sine of theta times the radius of the wheel divided by mg times the cosine of phi. Now we're ready to plug in some numbers, of course, after we cancel out the weight of the wheel. So this would be equal to the sine of theta. Now theta is known. We got that to be 1.146 degrees. And then we multiply it times the radius of the wheel, which, let's see here, radius of the wheel, six centimeters. We multiply that times six centimeters. And we divide that by the cosine of phi. Now we don't know yet what the cosine of phi is. And if it was significant, we'd go ahead and try to calculate that based upon knowing the radius of the wheel and what we expect B to be. But we know the angle is going to be very, very close to zero. And the cosine of zero is one, and the cosine of one degree is close to one. The cosine of two degrees is still close to one. So we can say that this can be approximated to be one, close enough. And so in the end, we can say that this is equal to six centimeters times the sine of 1.146 degrees and simply divided by one. So now we can plug in that number. 1.146, take the sine of that, and we multiply that times 6 centimeters, we end up with, this is equal to uh, 0 0.12 centimeters, or 1.2 millimeters. So that's the answer. This is the coefficient of rolling friction, in this case, of a wheel that's rolling down an incline of 2%, at a constant speed. If the angle was bigger between R 
And the normal here then of course will have to work some additional calculations. But at this point, most of the time, B is very small. We don't have to do that. And that's how we can approximate the answer quite accurately. That was done. Not a very good looking two. There, better.